Welcome to the Buck Stops here, the official audio show of NotInHallOfFame.com, and I'm your host, the Buck, Kirk Buckner, the owner and the operator of NotInHallOfFame.com, and of course the sister sites, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame, the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's the Hall of Fame show, season one, episode 24, and Evan Nolan and I, we've got quite a few things to talk about. A lot more than we actually thought we were going to be able to talk about at this point in time. Because the NASCAR Hall of Fame has announced their class of 2021. We really haven't been paying as much attention to it as we should. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's a pretty big Hall of Fame and it's uh, they've got a pretty loaded class. Well, it's one guy and three people that probably you never heard of because, well, hey, I never heard of him. He's, but now I have, so there you go. The College Football Hall of Fame has announced all of their finalists, and my god, it's so many people that we didn't talk about all of them. But nevertheless, it's a pretty important hall. Rob Manfred in baseball is not a Hall of Famer. He's the commissioner, and he sucks, and we talk about that. And we go a little bit of uh, politics with Colin Kaepernick. Is he going to be a player in the 2020 season? Uh, Evan thinks so, and he's got a good point, and he's probably right. So without further ado, let's bring in Evan, and here's the Hall of Fame show. Evan, how you doing? How are things in Chicago? They're going pretty well. Everything is uh, fairly nice here in terms of weather. And, uh, yeah, and we are a state that actually has done a pretty good job with the COVID stuff. So uh, we're, the, Illinois has the, uh, the best results of pretty much any state in the union. So that's nice. That's really so. impressive considering your population density. I agree. Yeah, the two states are doing the best are uh, Illinois and Massachusetts, the two states I care about the most. So, <laughs> sorry, state and commonwealth, the commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, ah. it's actually 46 states and four commonwealths, you know, the United States. You know, I, I did not know that. Yeah, we have the commonwealth of Massachusetts, the commonwealth of Virginia, the commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the commonwealth of Kentucky. Is and the rest of them are all states. Texas still called a republic? Or was, or was uh, that it could very well, It could very well be. I have seen the Texas Embassy in London, so it may very well still be the Republic of Texas. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, whoa. The, the, the Texas Embassy in London, England? Yeah, there, if you're in London, there is a building. I don't know what's inside it, but there is a building called the Texas Embassy that has a Texan flag hanging in front of it. And it serves the best fajitas in that side, in that side of the world. Yeah, the Mexican food is uh, lacking, or the Tex-Mex food tends to be lacking. Actually, all food tends to be lacking in London, so I'm sorry, that's not true, but, you know, might as well stick with the stereotypes, right? <laughs> hey, m- might as well, but that's why they drink so much. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, why the hell do I drink so much coming from Toronto? You uh, your your Tex-Mex food isn't good either. That's probably it. That could that you know what that could very well be. The only time I spent some time in Texas, I didn't have any Tex-Mex. Oh well, that was that was probably a mistake. It, so it's like going to it's like going to Kansas City and not having any ribs, or Boston and not having any clam chowder. I did have my chowder. So. I did have chowder in Boston. Yeah. Con- yes. Congratulations. Just by the way, it is chowder. And the only chowd is the creamy stuff from Boston. The red clam soup from New York is not actually chowd. I, so. I've, I have not partaken of red clam you should, soup. Yeah, it's, well, they call it Manhattan clam chowder, but essentially you're better off just drinking Clamato. Sounds better. Sounds like something that would be in chunks. Deuce Bigelow. Like, have you ever yeah. had a Portuguese breakfast? <laughs> So, uh, it's been an interesting week. Uh, I think a bit of a lull. Uh, we did our hockey preview last week, and next week we'll be able to talk about it, because I'm pretty sure it's going to happen on Wednesday. So we'll see if our, how mm-hmm. our predictions come through. Uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame, one that we've kind of abandoned, you and I, has announced their class. Well, as, as the person who came up with it, or was the, the editor of it at the beginning, there's a reason we dropped it, and that's because... They, there are all the people at the beginning because all we did were drivers, and then we don't know enough about crew chiefs and stuff like that to mm-hmm. be to know anything. If we actually had a NASCAR person, that might make a difference here. Uh, but they're they're getting to the point now where they inducted too many people too soon, and now they're kind of picking as they go through here a little bit. I think well, it's what, the smallest class they've had in a long time. There's the smallest well, they've ever had. Well, I guess there's like one name and then three other people I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so what Dale Earnhardt Jr. I think everyone knows who that is. Uh, first year eligible, got in in his first year of eligibility. Uh, no got surprise 76% there. Seventy six percent of the vote. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Dale Jr.? I mean, super popular guy from what I understand. Yeah, super popular uh, guy. Uh, never won the 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 cup, uh, but one of the most popular races out there. And not just because of who his dad was. I mean, that didn't didn't hurt at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, just a uh, very consistent, very popular driver for a very long time who has a whole bunch of wins. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when, when, you, when you look at who he's up against, uh, he, uh, I mean, he won 15 consecutive most popular driver awards. Um, so when you look at, at who else he was up against, it was pretty much a no-brainer that, that Junior is getting in as soon as he had the opportunity to do so to this year. Yeah, the way I was sort of seeing that, it was pretty much the only other modern driver that could have got in. It looked like it was Ricky Rudd. Yeah, right. And if you're choosing between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ricky Rudd, that's not really much of a uh, not much of a comparison. Right, and it's no disrespect to, to Mr. Rudd. But no, 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 okay, no disrespect yeah. to Ricky Rudd. But if you ask the average person uh, who any of these people are, uh, that it's no doubt the difference in, in Q rating between the two. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and another, the, so what they had three others, uh, Mike Stefanik. So when I was reading about him and admittedly, what I sort of learned from him was from the ESPN article and a briefing on Wikipedia, they can't even estimate how many wins he had because it was in the yeah. weird dirt track days. Yeah. That, you know, dirt track days, uh, that was one of the funnest parts of doing NASCAR. So when I was going through all the NASCAR stuff, there are two things that are interesting. One, the early days of NASCAR were crazy. Uh, it's just amazing that, honestly, anybody survived them. Uh, but two, as part of that, uh, just watching the development of safety safety stuff basically came because of crashes that killed people over and over again. Um, but anyway, uh, he, uh, yeah, I mean, Stefanik... Uh, yeah, Stefanik is one of the modified tours ten greatest drivers of all time. So it's, uh, I mean, it's 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 crazy. Uh, wait, well, you said you said Stefanik, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, because Stefanik is the modified guy. Oh, that's right. I meant, meant Red Farmer. Red Farmer was the guy who did that. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Red Red, yeah. Red Farmer. That, that's, was that's, the that's, that's on so, me. So, but what, what is Stefanik? Let's talk about him first. So mm-hmm. Stefanik is, is uh, one of the greatest modified races of all time. Yeah. Um, so he didn't have a ton of wins on the NASCAR circuit, but that's more like a overall body of work uh, thing um, with, with him. He unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago now. Um, probably the greatest racer ever from Rhode Island, if that means anything. Uh, but yeah, Stefanik uh, is, uh, is definitely somebody who, if, if you're looking for drivers and you're going to go just outside this main NASCAR circuit, somebody who de- definitely is, uh, is worthy. Um, but yeah, you were talking about Red Farmer, though. Yeah, I, yeah, that's I, I got my names all mixed up. Sorry about that. That's fine. That's fine. So I mean, he won. He won four championships, uh, three in the latent model sportsman, and one in the modified. He's still alive now. He's what eighty seven, like eighty eight years old, eighty seven. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's absolutely no way of determining how many races he has won. It's kind of amazing. Well, which clearly was was an awful lot. Uh, just you know, th- three diff- different characters, three different eras. It's it's kind of nice to see. And imagine if you're really into NASCAR, you've got to be happy with these three. Uh, do we want to go into uh, Mr. Seagraves? Uh, what's his first name? I just dropped that for a Ralph. second. Ralph Seagraves, yes. Uh, entering, uh, I guess, in the builder category. Yeah, the, the landmark award is what they call it for contributions to the sport. Um, but yeah, so he was a. Uh, executive for um, Winston, for R.J.R. Reynolds Tobacco, and was one of the people who basically convinced them to call it the Winston Cup. Um, so, that, I mean, I don't, I don't have much more to say about an executive for a tobacco company, because I don't know anything other than, you know, the Laramie Cigarettes people who uh, tried to steal tobacco from Homer Simpson. Um, <laughs> they got, they crashed into the hill. They got what they deserved. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, that's one of the great things, by the way, if you ever get Disney Plus, is they have every Simpsons episode ever. So every once in a while, I'm like, what Simpsons episode have I not seen in a while? And I'll just go watch it if I need something to do. I, so I, of course, watch the Tobacco episode. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, I guess 
when it comes to builders, that's part of the problem we had with NASCAR. There are just so many of these other folks that it's hard for us to determine how worthy any of them are. Uh, but I mean, as far as I can tell, the guy who it was a Winston Cup for up until it wasn't politically correct anymore for it to be the Winston Cup. So, but but most of our childhoods, mm-hmm. um, if he's the guy who made that happen, it seemed it would seem to me that would make some sense. All right, so I'm I'm going to throw a curveball because uh, Atcha, we didn't talk about this in our sort of pre conversation. Uh, NASCAR has been sort of getting a lot of uh, attention and. Since we don't have that much Hall of Fame stuff to really yeah. go through, I thought I'd sort of bounce this sort of bounce this off you because I, lear- I we both sort of talked about it. We're not as big into NASCAR as maybe we should be, considering it's it's a pretty big deal sport. But mm-hmm. a, I'm a Canadian. B, you're from the north. It's just it's more of a regional thing, realistically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Confederate flag is now banned, spearheaded by when I read this name, Bubba Wallace. I would not have thought like that's the best driving name ever. First off. Right, and yeah, but, I mean, but he's an African American. Bubba Wallace just doesn't look like you'd expect him to. No, no, ab- absolutely not. And you know, kudos on NASCAR for removing uh, what has become a very. I guess you know what it was always an offensive flag, and I'm going to do an admission here, Evan. Uh, n- not about a midget on a pool table like I did last week. Okay, good. I should probably, which I probably should have edited out, but eh, everyone who knows me knows that story anyway. So <laughs> what the hell? Well, we unfortunately went back to with like three other jokes, so it's hard to edit out. But okay, go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah. So that was a flag, and again, just uh, growing up in uh, ur- like urban Canada or suburban Canada, one of the big shows I watched as a kid. And then, yeah, I'm a few years older, so this might not have been a show for you. You ever watch Dukes of Hazard a lot? Of course, of course, I watch Dukes of Hazard. I actually have, and my kid plays with. A uh, a small version of the General Lee that I got when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So growing, so, yeah. Up, yeah. So like growing up, right? So like I didn't know the sort of like all the connotations of the flag. I mean, here you got like two two good old boys always got the girl at the end of every episode, and they were teaching the police a lesson, fighting corruption. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're essentially Antifa, just flying yeah. the wrong flag. That, if- if, if, there's, if there's anyone I could think of who's Antifa, it's definitely a Luke and Bo Duke. Yes, go ahead, continue. But yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> but it, it's sort of amazing to me just like how that was sort of like one thing that I, if I were to go back in time, just sort of like things that I sort of had, because I, I, we did a tri- like a school trip to Gettysburg, and so like I, I think half of mm-hmm. us like bought a Confederate flag. So I had one on my wall, which mm. from my right, knowledge of the D- well, no, because of my knowledge of, of of the South was, okay, yeah, they lost a war, but hey, they fought pretty hard, and they, Bo and Duke have it, and it's actually aesthetically looking a good-looking flag, considering how many countries have no thought put into theirs. Right. So, except, except Nepal. Nepal gets bonus points for, like, the we don't triangles. need no square flag. Two triangles would be for us. Right. Uh, and I know that... Uh, this turned into fun with flags with Sheldon Cooper, but you know, like that was sort of the one thing that I've completely done a 180 on just from learning other, other history and just other stuff. That's not that I wasn't aware of the civil war. Of course I was, but it was always presented for years of what Southern culture was. I mean, even, even years later in the 1996 Olympics, people were rolling their eyes on it. At that point I was too. When in the opening ceremony, you have a but there was actually pickup trucks that came out spelling out "Howdy, y'all." Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to blame you for your childhood not knowing what the Confederate flag meant, particularly as a Canadian. Um, a lot. One of the things I think we've. Re- I mean. I'll, Regardless of what you think of the Black Lives Matter protest, a lot has changed in the last three weeks. I mean, George Floyd only died like 23 days ago, which is crazy when you think about it with everything that has happened. Right. Um, but I think what we have found through a lot of this and, and the reexamining of what's going on out there and white people in this country – there were some there were some woke white people out there, but there were a lot of just people in the middle of the road who just didn't care one way or another, who realized that there's actually a lot of stuff out there that kind of sucks, mm-hmm. uh, and and pulling it down and reexamining it is is a big part of it. And the flag, the 
the Stars and Bars uh, Confederate battle flag um, is a part of, I mean, you'll see it if you, I drive up to Northern Wisconsin uh, every summer coming up next month, mm-hmm. um, at the end of the month, we may have to miss a week just because I don't know if I'm going to get cell phone reception up there. Uh, but driving up there through Northern Wisconsin to Dairyland, you'll see Confederate flags. Really? And it, yeah, and you'll see them like on barns and around and on trucks and all sorts of stuff. Um, because it's, it's very much a symbol of, it's very much become a symbol of white heritage. It will really, excuse me, it always really was, but it's become that way. And NASCAR realizing that if they are the redneck only sport, they're never going to grow where, the way they want to grow. It was probably a smart financial decision, but it was also a heck of a social statement, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder now if there's going to be a run on Mississippi state flags because the state of Mississippi still has, it's the only state that still has the stars and bars on their flag. Right. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting if all of a sudden we don't have the Confederate flag, but we have the Mississippi flag, but, uh, but a whole bunch of things are being reexamined. Of course we can't get rid of the Tomahawk chop, but uh, I don't know if you heard today what the university of Florida did. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was, a uh, it was something I wasn't that familiar with. Uh, we're just watching, college sports when, when I can. I think that might be something only diehard uh, college fans would know. Yeah, the gator bait, which I, I've never heard that yeah. as a term before. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I never had heard that term before either. But again, you and I are pretty much northerners and mm-hmm. the sports in the south. I mean, I've seen people do the, the gator chomp, which yeah. doesn't bother me. It's, it's not as overtly disrespectful as the tomahawk chomp, right? But the whole thing that goes around with it after finding out literally today exactly what the basis was behind it, I can completely understand why they're doing it and why they reexamined it. For sure. Um, but oh. it's, it, there's, there's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff changing very, very quickly here. Um, and it's going to be, I mean, we try and stay out of politics. So it's going to be interesting headed in, heading in towards the election. If our president loses, with all the change that's gone on, because the Supreme Court ruled against the president mm-hmm. basically every opportunity they could this week. Um, Did you see his tweet exactly today? Exactly what happens. I'm sorry? Did you see his tweet today? Which one? Yeah, well, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, when I was talking to my dad today, it's it's always like, uh, so how, how's your buddy Trump? Uh, what did he do this time? And. I said, guarantee you, he's, he did something. He said he tweeted something, probably off the shitter. And yeah, so no, his tweet was, uh, oh, I guess the Supreme Court doesn't like me very much. Yeah, and two of them he put there. One of them voted against him on one of the one of the cases. <laughs> so I mean, what, oh, that's incredible. I, let's let's get out of politics, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll just say it was a very surprising, and I mean, as a northerner, mm-hmm. a very good step at least financially i think for the for the sport because i as much as people say like they're not going to watch the nfl if everybody kneels and i can guarantee you everybody's going to freaking kneel in the nfl and they're mm-hmm. going to do it in basketball too yep um uh as much as people say that um there no there's nothing else to do <laughs> you know what i mean it's like nascar and college football is the south and if at least sports wise. And if those two things have banned your Confederate battle flag and you're not going to watch them, what are you going to do? Um, so I, I don't put much stock in it, but if they're going to expand beyond where they are, that's something that they are, uh, just business wise, it makes sense for them to do it. Mm-hmm. No, uh, totally agree. And I guess that one uh, racer whose name is escaping me, I know with an Italian last name, uh, he wasn't going to getting into the NASCAR Hall of Fame anyway. The gentleman who has decided, gentleman, I'm using that term loosely, uh, who's decided that he will no longer participate. Well, his average finishing was, in his races was 28th, so he's never been good at, with anything race related. So. <laughs> yeah, he's always, he's always behind on those, isn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, but no, that that was an interesting that was an interesting change. Um, and I mean, honestly, shocking when I saw it, I couldn't believe that, that, that was something that actually got done. So no, very, very quickly. And you know, it's anyone who's not going to watch because of it. Well, maybe you weren't that big a fan in the first place. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, anyway. So, yeah, so what, go, go, as you sort of uh, had a good segue there, going from one Southern sport to another, the College uh, Football Hall of Fame has announced their uh, – Potential list of 2021, 20, uh, I'm not going through all of them. I'm not even going to go through any of them because there, there's so many. You're not going through all You're not going through all 78? No. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no, because that's, and that's just in the, in the main category because there's still all the Division right, two, uh which pretty much it's all the same people who didn't get in last year. Very yeah. few changes. And, and, there, and there are a lot of Hall of Famers. Who are on this list? Um, who have not? Who have not gotten in to the uh, N- the NCAA Hall of Fame? That are in the actual uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. So it's always interesting to see, like, if you're balancing. I'm just going to pick two of them for the heck of it. Mm-hmm. If you're balancing what Tony Gonzalez did in college, like, I'm not exactly sure is actually better than say something that Eric, Eric Bieniemy. Did in college, like there's no question in the pros who's a better player, and Eric Bieniemy probably should be an NFL head coach right now, uh, and isn't for well, that's a whole separate discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you were to put Eric Bieniemy in over over Tony Gonzalez, I think there's an argument to be made in in the uh, college football Hall of Fame that you could never ever possibly make in pro football. I actually remember seeing Tony Gonzalez play more uh, college basketball. Because he was a two sport player, yeah. So I, re- I remember seeing him more, uh, especially too. Because like back then, uh, there wasn't as much access to sports. So I do remember him playing in the. I think he was in the Sweet Sixteen. I believe I could be off on that. Uh, I think that, I think that is correct, but I don't have that in front of me either. So because I, I wasn't thinking that we were going to talk about Tony Gonzalez. Sorry, I, I wasn't either. I was just flipping. I was just flipping through, and I had it on Eric Bieniemy, who mm-hmm. was one of the best running backs in college football I can remember. He was fantastic, uh, and then was only okay in the NFL. So, yeah. So, uh, ho- hopefully, it's going to be a fun class. And again, kudos to the college uh, college football Hall of Fame. Uh, I think they do a fantastic job of what they're doing, and yeah. hopefully, everything sort of uh, calms down a bit in Atlanta, so that people can enjoy that again. Yeah, they they could use they could use a good class, put it that way, to try and bring people back in. Do you um, think that could actually benefit someone like Ray Lewis, for example? Much bigger name than a lot of other people. Whether he's got a better college resume than some of the others, you know, is certainly open to debate. But a bigger name like that could that sort of aid him this year? It's it's entirely possible because I mean, honestly, you could make. Just the names on this list, you can make a hell of a uh, a hell of a Hall of Fame just out of like they're the actual Hall of Famers on this list. I mean, Andre Tippett, uh, Ray Lewis. You have I already just said Tony Gonzalez. You have Steve Hutchinson. Um, who else is here? A Simeon Rice, uh, who's not a hall, not a Hall of Famer, yeah, but it's still big. Simeon man. Rice isn't a Hall of Famer, but he's been considered. Marvin Harrison, uh, Dan Hampton, uh, Julius Peppers, another I mean, big one. Yeah, uh, there, I mean, there are tons. Uh, uh, Dwight Freeney, who will be a Hall of Famer. Kevin Falk, who's a Patriots Hall of Famer. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's... And then you have people like Tim Couch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Michael Bishop, um, who were very good. Uh, Champ Bailey's on this list, but there, there, uh, Morton Anderson's on this list, actually, too. But there, there are a whole bunch of really good... There are a whole bunch of Hall of Famers here. Here are just not in the. Well, they're mm-hmm. Pro Football Hall of Famers. They're not in the NCAA Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame. So would it surprise me if it ended up being a class of almost all Pro Football Hall of Famers? No. Yeah, I mean, it could, if it's going to happen, this could be the year for that. Just because you just need the feel-good story. As for what their financials yeah. are, I have no idea. Right. Yeah, but I mean, if if you end up with, I'm just, I'm not. I'm just picking names of people who I don't know. It's like Jeff Bragel, Brandon Burlsworth, Matt Cavanaugh, Jared DeVries, and DJ Dozier. People, nobody's going to pay any attention. You need at least a couple of names headlining, headlining that. Mm-hmm. No, and, so. yeah, and that's, that, that's exactly it. Uh, with the with the Division Two, or I guess the subdivision category, uh, it's vir- virtually everybody from last year with with minus one. Like no changes whatsoever, mm-hmm. other than one. 
Because I just copied. Oh, they want to make sure they they want to make sure they got it right, I guess, or they they really want to put that much effort into it. That's kind of that's so. kind of what I'm sort of thinking. It made me writing about it a lot easier because I just copied and pasted a <laughs> lot of it. I don't know why I never thought of doing that before. When it's always these annual things, but the college one always makes me have to do that because it just takes <clears throat> so long to write all that. Yeah, so I'm 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 not, I've been to the College Football Hall of Fame, which we talked about in South Bend. How many people do we normally put in? I, that part I'm not actually sure of. Uh, varies uh, usually. Uh, more often than not, it's usually around ten, give or take. Okay. But how how many from each category though? Last year was only. I don't think they're they're mandated to take someone oh, from each not. category. Okay. So they don't have okay. to because uh, last year I don't believe they took anyone from Division Two. Which explains why everybody's back. Yep. Except for one who just isn't there. Mm. For whatever reason. He knows what he did. <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> so you you said you had a big baseball rant, which may or may not be happening. We don't even know. Uh, it seems like every I mean, that, day that, this week I yeah. woke up to sort of thinking – to seeing like one tweet, okay, it's going to happen. Oh, no, it's not. And it would happen every single day. Okay. So, first of all, to Commissioner Manfred and to Tony Clark, uh, former Red Sox Tony Clark, just shut up. <laughs> Stop negotiating through the media. We don't need dueling statements all over the place, right? Just figure this out and get it done. You like you don't need ten days to respond to something, which is what they were asking for originally. Like it's we live in the age of Zoom. Someone talk to somebody, say we'll meet again in five hours, and figure out what the counter proposal is. It's not like you guys don't have some sort of plan in place anyway, because the twenty twenty one labor dispute is coming. Like the, the, this labor deal ends at the end of December uh, next year. So if you don't think there is an issue coming in 2022, if they can't figure out how to do this now, you're crazy. But let's just talk about Rob Manfred for a second. Here's my question to you. Sure. Do you think Rob Manfred likes baseball? No. I don't either. Which begs the question, why the fuck is he in charge? He's the, he, I, I swear <laughs> that he makes Gary Bettman look like God. Well, we, we, I had that I had that joke, I don't know, weeks ago now at this point where someone said, uh, who's the best commissioner in sports? And it was almost universally Adam Silver. And someone said, uh, where does it put the other three? And I responded, it's a tie for fifth. <laughs> uh, it's actually a tie for fifth, and I believe Manfred has fallen to six. Behind like, Vince McMahon it's, of the XFL. It's ridiculous. It, yeah, yeah, it's... It's ridiculous. It's Gary Bettman is barely competent. Roger Goodell is, you cannot convince me he's not a scarecrow who's been brought to life. Essentially. He's like his, his basic lack of human intelligence on how things work is mind boggling. Even he's had a, he's actually not had the worst week for the first time. And you have to understand, I hate Roger Goodell, but he actually has had a pretty good week. Rob Manfred cannot get this together knowing exactly what was at stake here because your time for baseball is the summer and both hockey and football and basketball are going to be invading it and you can't get your goddamn act together to get this taken care of. They, what they, are you doing? They had exactly they had the exact same opportunities. So you're the one big sport that can't figure it out. Uh, now, NASCAR and PGA, that's a totally different thing. You can sort of do that a lot easier without uh, interaction. But if we're talking like the big sports, and I'm going to throw a MLS in there because even they've figured something out. It's just, I say even right. they like it's a bad thing. That's not how I meant, to, meant that at all. But they figured something out in Europe and uh, with the EPL that, that came back. And, of course, the first game back – and a goal was disallowed. That was an obvious goal. So technology has come so far. <sighs> welcome, welcome to English football. <laughs> Sheffield United gets screwed. That sounds unlikely. 
Sheffield United has a chance to go into the top five and get a place in Europe if Case's season ever ends and we just find a way that they can't get the goal? No. Because, like, yeah. there, there was no sort of, like, magical uh, camera angle that you really needed to see. That that wasn't. But, anyway, I, I, I digress. Obviously, you watched that game, too. Yeah, well, I didn't actually get to watch the game, but I saw, I watched the, uh, the uh, Premier League match of the day mm-hmm. recaps uh, here on, on uh, NBC Sports. And, uh, yeah, that was... That was bad. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> so. Yeah, so Rob Manfred is the VAR of commissioners. <laughs> Rob Manfred is the past interference review of commissioners. <laughs> like, how, can, can we get worse? What's worse in sports than the past interference review that they got rid of? It is a same well, span nothing. Uh, <laughs> Pro, Rob Manfred is the, is the uh, Fox hockey uh, fox tail. Oh, the remember that puck. Used to a puck? <laughs> <laughs> Rob uh, Manfred is the God. WNBA of commissioners. All right, that's now well, you're just looking for hate mail. I understand. I understand that any intention is good intention, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my God, he is he is so bad. Like the fact the draft was only five rounds is a sham. Oh, completely. The fact they eliminated. All those minor league teams is a freaking sham. Like, I. Yeah, that's going to do so much joke, to grow I mean, the game in the United States. If they were worried before that it was that, and they, and I, I, I hate that there's that xenophobic attitude. But let's be honest, it's there. If you think it was dominated more by the Caribbean and Latin American players, what do you think it's going to be now when you're not, when you're not showing yeah. proper development? Yeah, I, like just just the whole idea. I mean, you and I talked about this mm-hmm. online that he was making Bud Selig look like a Hall of Famer. At yes. this point, like yeah. if Bud Selig is a Hall of Famer, I legitimately understand it. If this is the level he's being judged against, well, he makes Gary and, Bettman's induction look good. Oh my God! He, I, I, I will stand by what I said to you, though. He does not make Bowie Kuhn's induction look good. <laughs> Bowie Kuhn has no. Ha, Bruce has no idea, has no right to be anywhere near Hall of Fame under any circumstances. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting if they lose the season. Let's just say they can't get it together and they lose this season, right? Mm-hmm. When they lost the 90, 94 season, they had up until like August seventeenth, and then they lost the last forty games. We had no World Series because of the the labor strike, mm-hmm. and of course Fred McGriff had to wait extra time to get the Hall of Fame. We. One of our favorite stories. We've yes. all talked about this, right? Yep. And the only thing they had going for them when they came back was Cowrickin Jr.'s streak, which is not the most exciting thing to watch just the guy show up every day. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and that's where the steroid era came in. And they needed that. They just had that 30 for 30 that barely mentioned steroids of the summer of Sosa and McGuire. Like, I was in college in 98, and it was like every TV had every Cardinals or Cubs game on to see if they'd hit a homer. I was walking down the hallway to my girlfriend's room when somebody screamed like on, uh, in one of the doors and with, uh, one of the dorm rooms with their door open. And I just jumped into the room and watched the 70th homer from McGuire barely sneak over the, uh, fence there. They can't do that again. No, no, they, they can't. And not only that, they don't have any stars. They have stars, but their stars are boring. Well, like Mookie Betts is super exciting, but doesn't talk out uh, about anything. Uh, Mike Trout is one of the greatest players of all time, and basically has the person personality. Generally, I mean, he may be very exciting in real life, but when he talks to the media, he essentially sounds like a wet paper bag. Mike Trout, if he was, if we just look at overall popularity and, and recognition. Where would he even be in the in, amongst NBA players? He would would he even be top twenty. Wait, so we're comparing the best player in baseball to the popularity of the top twenty players in NBA? Well, just rec- recognition. I mean, like so I would I would say I would say if you put up pictures, the average sports fan would be able to name probably closer to fifty NBA players before they'd be able to name Mike Trump. 
So 50, okay, yeah. If you had, if, if, if you just had a picture up without, like, the hat and everything out, but just, like, here's an athlete, who is it? I bet that you'd have about 50 NBA players who'd have higher Q ratings than Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. The second time we've and used part of that Q is the fact his team it. has never made the playoffs. It's made the, he's been in one playoff game his entire career. And there's just nobody who sort of transcends the game. The NBA has a whole lot of them. Uh, NHL doesn't. They never have, really. Well, they have, but the closest they have, I'd say the closest they have is Ovechkin. Yeah, I mean, Ovechkin does, and Sidney Crosby does, except he's a, he's a whiny little slithering. <laughs> it's saying he's so whiny. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's who you have going for you in hockey. In the NFL, there's tons of personalities, and they have the, it's the hardest time seeing them because they're wearing helmets all the time. So mm-hmm. it's not like you could see Brady's hair waving in the wind as he throws a touchdown. Um, but I mean, there's, there are so many more NBA, uh, NFL players who are much more knowledgeable. I mean, just think of like we've had this huge backlog of guys on the uh, on the uh, the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot. Just mm-hmm. think of the guys who have gone in recently. I mean, even guys like Vladimir Guerrero was a fun personality, and uh, and Vlad was Vlad was at the top of the game, but you would never think at any point Vlad was a single best player. In baseball, he was one of the top ten for a long time. But he's never the single best player in baseball. But Vlad Guerrero was fun. He was exciting to watch. He hit balls that would bounce on the plate and hit it for a home run. Like he was a cool dude, and he was probably like the let's just say on average the seventh best player in baseball. There's nobody. There's nobody interesting. There's not even like very good or even good players that just sort of stand out. Like David Wells. You know, like a, like a very good mm-hmm. baseball player, uh, someone who I think got a few Hall of Fame votes. But that was a character. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was on Letterman a few times. I mean, who? what baseball player does any late night show host, not, not, of course, they'd rather talk about a lot of other things, but who, that they'd want to have on? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm spoiled from Boston just because I thought Mookie was fantastic, but Mookie's still pretty quiet, too. Uh, but it's not like anyone's going to, I mean, who the most outspoken baseball player that comes to mind right now, honestly, is David Price. Yeah. Like, can you think of anyone else who no. has anything interesting to say? And a lot of people don't like David Price, but I can't think of anyone else who has anything particularly interesting to say in all of baseball. The whistling frogs in the background have more to say. <laughs> well, they definitely make themselves heard. Uh, but, that I mean, they are. It's <laughs> getting a lot worse with the rainy well, season, but anyway. <laughs> well, I don't know if you heard, though, but like one of the things they have in this proposal that appears to be happening, besides expanded playoffs, which apparently is just what we're doing this year in every sport, is, uh, is that they're going to eliminate the DH in the NL for this season I, and next mm-hmm. as part of it. Now, that might be going back to Chicks Dig the Long Ball, right? Uh, but... That's they're basically, and as an AL guy, I think I'd much rather see more at bats from from a guy like David Ortiz versus a guy like Tim Wakefield. If we'd had you know the didn't have the DH, mm-hmm. but it's one of the cool things about the leagues is that there's different rules in a certain set. There are two different ways of playing baseball, and it's a little bit strange that they exist at the same time. It's one of the few quirks about baseball, and it looks like they're just going to eliminate it because they realize that this is a disaster. You know, and that's another thing, too. I mean, baseball is so – and you said, like, all those great quirks, like different ballparks, different dimensions. Uh, mm-hmm. One quirk that I love and hate is different strike zones depending on the umpire. Well, I mean, if, if they could get rid of – if they get rid of Angel, uh, Angel Hernandez and Joe West – uh, and C.B. Buckner as part of whatever deal that is, I think everybody would feel better about things. Oh, I like the Buckner guy. I like, sounds like a, like a stand-up guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's B-U-C-K-N-O-R. Oh, I don't like him anymore. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's impeding on your trademark. <laughs> um, although I do have to say, the one thing about eliminating the DH I did enjoy was uh, Dan Heron today posted that uh, 
he's adding to his Hall of Fame uh, credentials that he will be the last player in MLB history to have a four hit game. So <laughs> I did. I did enjoy that today. But it's just like the players seem like they're ready to play. And whether they are not, I don't know. But just the the whole negotiation doesn't make any sense. They're trying to instead of just paying the players what they're worth. Like if they signed a contract. If we play half a season, they should get half their contract. It's not that hard. And they're trying to get them to take 80% of what they would have made over half a season. Right. Why? Like they have made money every single year since forever. And they're worried they might lose money as an organization for one year. And they definitely will lose money now. They, but they were so freaking cheap about it. They didn't want to pay people what they promised they were going to pay them. Like you would have paid them that money if COVID didn't happen. Just pay them the money. They're just not. They're just not looking, thinking long term in any capacity. The, I I think that people can argue that they're the number three sport. I will argue that. Wasn't that way when I was a kid? No, I mean they're definitely no better than number three. I mean it's NFL one, NBA two, mm-hmm. big gap. And then you can debate. You can debate if yeah, it's honestly you can make a debate that the number three sport in the U.S. very shortly is going to be the EPL. <laughs> what about the NHL? I stand by what I said. All right, all right. Well, soccer has come I a think, long, long way in the United States. That's well, for damn sure. Soccer, you MLS soccer has a long, long way. The sport that more young kids are watching is EPL. Now that it's more accessible. That no sport benefits more from the wide open TV screens than soccer. Because you can see everything that's happening all at once on a large portion of the field. Well, that, EPL, is, well, just, EPL is going to be much bigger than the EPL is on during the day at times kids can watch mm-hmm. here in the U.S. And you can't say that about Major League Baseball uh, playoff games. Well, also, and for their short attention spans, it's over in an hour and a half. Exactly. And there are no commercials. It just goes, you have a 15 minute break in the middle where you can, you know, go refuel and then it goes for another, it goes for another 45 minutes and it's over. It's, it's, you're a, in, you're it's, in and it's out a great two TV hours. sport. It, it's just fantastic. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that hockey should have the opportunity. If hockey had anyone who knew what the hell they were doing in charge of it, Hockey has a massive opportunity to move into the third spot, but they don't have anyone in charge who knows what the hell they're doing. Although, as long as uh, American talent keeps coming up, you know, I think that can certainly as benefit. Long, as long as they keep signing contracts with stations that only think of them as a filler on times they don't have anything else to show. That's true too. They're never gonna. They're never gonna make it. They might as. I mean. I love I love NBC Sports because there's all sorts of cool things on there I'm not going to see anywhere else. But not many people are watching NBC Sports. Like, figure out, just figure out some way to get yourself on ESPN, even if you think it's a below market deal. Just figure it out. And it's not like they don't have enough channels to, do, to figure that out. Do, do most people in the in the U.S. though have ESPN and e, have ESPN two? Like, I get I know that goes by. Cable company to cable company. I, I, I mean, I can't say. I would say people with cable. The answer is probably yes. As on the dish, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I more and more people using streaming services. So I'm not exactly sure. A lot of people are cutting the cord. Yeah. Uh, in general. Yeah, I've done so that. I, I'm not exactly sure. But I can tell you that a lot more people are watching ESPN than are watching NBC Sports. Very true. So uh, I wanted to sort of close off today, and I know we said we weren't going to do a lot of politics, but we kind of do, and this, but it's sports related. Uh, but, but, but before we go into that, should we just do the passings quickly? Oh yes, I, I apologize, I forgot about that. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's touch on yeah, this. Yeah, there, there, there aren't that many this week, but we should probably bring just a few of them up. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the first is a four time NBA All Star from the early days of the NBA, Dick Garmaker, who passed away at the age of eighty seven. Um, he's, uh, was on the all American team in 1955 in college at the university of Minnesota. Uh, also on that team was a guy named Bill Russell. Um, I heard of him, but he, he was, you may have, 
Uh, he was drafted twice for both both times by the Minneapolis Lakers because at that point the draft, in order to try and build the sport, they had the draft be regional. So you had first dibs on players from your general area. Um, so at the University of Minnesota, he was drafted by the Minneapolis Lakers at 54 and 55. Uh, played with them for a while, won, I think, two championships, uh, but passed away at the age of 87 uh, earlier this week. And you also so, said he was uh, a very white individual. Yes, yeah. His number is retired by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. But, I mean, he, he averaged... 13.3 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 2.6 assists. We have to realize a lot of that was before a shot clock existed, so 13.3 points is pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, that's a yeah, very so good he point. Passed, yep. Yeah, he passed AJ 87. I still say the person who belongs in the Hall of Fame more than anyone else is a contributor who's not in is the dude who invented the shot clock for basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine that sport without it? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can. The scores are like 13 to 12. I can't remember the guy's name. Hold on, I'm going to look it up. Uh, who invented the shot clock? Danny Biasoni. He invented the 24-second shot clock during the 54-55 season to speed up the game. Danny so Biasoni. He just, All right. Yeah, so he, he, he was the owner of the uh, Syracuse National who decided to do it. He divided... Uh, he figured that if each team averaged 60, to- uh, 60 shots per game, he divided uh, 48 minutes into 120 shots, which came up with 24 seconds. So Danny Biasoni should be in the basketball hall. I'm just saying. Yeah, if, anyway. Tom- if Tommy John surgery is in the baseball hall of fame, then this can be in, in it too. Yeah, well, Dr. Dr. James Andrews needs to be in the baseball hall of fame. Let's be honest here. Definitely. As- there are very few people who have contributed more to baseball than James Andrews. Um, speaking of baseball, uh, another person who passed away this week was uh, Mike McCormick, who won a very unlikely Cy Young winner, but he won the 1967 NL Cy Young. Um, do you have any Mike McCormick memories you want to talk about? I have zero Mike McCormick memories. Uh, just one of those guys that, that I, when I was writing about, you know, how, how, how many times Cy Young winners – translate that into a hall of fame he was one of those weird ones that sort of pop up and it wasn't that he necessarily had that great a season but that's when everyone valued wins because he led the league in wins at mm-hmm. 22 and so when you have a 22 and 10 record uh a decent era 285 i mean it was still a decent year but a, but with a war well under five mm-hmm. you know it puts things in a bit of perspective in the modern era yeah, so he's a player who never played in the minor leagues. Um, he went directly from he went directly from being drafted into the uh, into the majors with the Giants, um, and pitched for 16 seasons. Ended up with a career uh, 134 and 128, 373 ERA, 1321 strikeouts, and he mm-hmm. went to pitch for he pitched for the Giants both in New York and San Francisco. The Orioles, Senators, uh, Giants again when he actually won the Cy Young the second time. Or the second, on his second stint, he won the Cy Young. The Yankees had finished with the Royals in 16 years. So a heck of a good career. He won a Cy Young award. Congratulations. Never going to be a Hall of Famer, but uh, mm-hmm. passed at the age of 81 earlier this week. Yeah, and uh, didn't get that much attention considering that he is a former Cy Young winner. But again, it sort of more speaks towards his overall career. Right. And the last person I think we should bring up is Ricky Valens, uh, also known as David Spencer. Not well, Richie Valens, who yeah. you were like, oh, didn't he die in the crash of the Big Bopper? Yeah. Yes, Richie Valens did die in the crash of the Big Bopper. Uh, but Ricky Valens uh, is actually the, like I said, named David Spencer. He's from uh, the Wales. He's the first singer from Wales ever to have a number one hit in England uh, when he sang Tell Laura I Love Her, which is a very sappy 60s song, uh, but he passed at the age of 84. And I, I, we were talking, talking about what I joked that C.B. Buckner stole your uh, copyright. It seems very much like Ricky Valens uh, stole Richie Valens's copyright, uh, seeing as I tell her I love her happened uh, about a year after Richie Valens died in that plane crash. Oh, Bebop-a-lula. <laughs> Wait, no, that's Gene Vincent. Damn it. 
that, that, that's all right, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, those those were really the only three people, unless you were really into Hungarian Olympic water polo. It was a very bad week for Hungarian Olympic water polo players. Yeah, you said two um, of them died. Two uh, multi-medalists. Yes, yeah, multi, multi gold medal winners. Apparently, Hungary is very good at water polo, which I didn't know until this. But they got one guy won in the fifties and into the sixties, and the other guy won in the nineties and the two thousands. Uh, but they both uh, they both passed away this week, and I'm not even going to begin to try and pronounce their names. No. So, <laughs> what is Hungary good at anyway? I guess other than water polo, I didn't even know that. They you. They used to be really good at soccer, and then that just fell off the map. They were one of the big powers in. Uh, really up through the 60s and maybe into the 70s in European soccer, and it just has not been the same since. Um, they're also pretty good at handball, which is a sport that hasn't really caught on in North America. It's actually pretty fun to watch. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to watch when the Olympics comes up, is handball. What it is should your be a favorite? sport the United States is much better at than we are. Uh, but I just don't think many people play it as part of the problem. Like you, you have sort of like a go-to sport. Is that sort of like your underrated sport to watch during every, each Olympics? Mm. Like, it, like is well, handball that one for you? Because for me, it's Greco-Roman wrestling. That's, that is fun to watch. Curling is always fun to watch because you can zone out during that for the Winter Olympics. Honestly, during the Winter Olympics, the one that's absolutely nuts and crazy is either it's illusion skeleton. Because I'm just convinced they're going to die the whole time. So it's, that's edge of your seat excitement right there. And um, sometimes they I feel they, like winter Olympic have. sports. Not in the I feel Olympics. like winter Olympic sports, like the ski jump is in, is really intense. Um, even biathlon can be intense where they're, they're cross country skiing, which is kind of boring. But all of a sudden they have to stop, take everything off and like shoot a gun and hit targets. And then if they don't hit a target, they have to do penalty laps. It's, that's actually pretty, I like watching, I like watching all the winter Olympic sports. Uh, some Olympics, there are some like dressage and things I just aren't, I'm just not going to watch. But no, oh, Greco World of Wrestling is a good one. Yeah, that's, I think, sort of the one that, that's the only time I'm ever going to watch, but I get excited to. Uh, the one that I know mm-hmm. that's sort of like the high, everyone gets excited, not everyone, but it, one of the like, big ticket ones is swimming. I just can't get into that. Mm-hmm. I can understand that. Um I don't yeah, there's some track and field events that are like, honestly, javelin and, and that stuff, just watching people throw stuff over and over again is kind of boring. Um, I will say it would, it would have been interesting because this would have been the first Olympics for both baseball and karate, um, which now is getting delayed till next year. I'm surprised karate has never been Olympic sports because judo has been and taekwondo has been. Hmm. Um, so if they, if they hold it on Mount Fuji, would it be high karate? No. I, 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 I thought that was good. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so anyway, all right, so why don't you ask me the last question? That's probably going to get us political trouble. Go ahead. Well, just, just, uh, it's a big game with all the things that are going around, and every, a lot of people are talking about that. Does Colin Kaepernick play a game in the NFL this year? Colin Kaepernick will be signed by the Los Angeles Chargers within the month. How's that for a prediction? That's a very uh, that's a pretty bold one right right off the right off the get go. It's pretty bold and pretty specific. Um, and you know why I want to say that the Los Angeles Chargers of Anaheim are going to be signing uh, Colin Kaepernick? Well, I did hear that they're that he's on their list of a potential workout. Uh, and they just. The, the Rams and Chargers together are going to be on hard knocks. And ah, uh, yes. And he is considering doing that. And the exposure for the league, whether or not he plays, and I know the Chargers has drafted a quarterback in the first round, but whether or not he plays, just having him in camp would be a ratings boon for the NFL and there's no way he's going to go to the Rams. No. So the chargers who are always outdrawn in their own baby stadium by other teams, fans who need something. And it would be very surprising to me if it wasn't the Chargers. The answer to the question, will he be signed is yes. Will he play it down that? I can't tell you. 
Um, I think it all depends on whether or not, I mean, he's over 30 now. He hasn't actually played in the league for four years. So I'd like to see him throw a few passes in preseason. Um, he'll, he'll, if, if he signs, he'll play some pre, and they have a preseason. They'll get some preseason snaps. Whether well, actually the snap in a real game, I don't know. Uh, but he will be signed, and I'm calling that he will be signed by the Chargers. Yeah, I th- actually, I, I didn't even think of the hard knocks. Uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, they're not a contender because no contender wants them. Right. And you know, it, and just it's not because they're worried that he can't play. Any contender does not want to deal with a distraction and and say what we want about how we ha- how he was done dirty by the NFL, which he was. Mm-hmm. If they thought Michael Sam was a distraction before, and I, I was I was rewatching sort of the Tony Dungy interview, or not an interview, but just something he said when he was asked that. I think it was actually on a pregame show on Sunday Night Football, and he said he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, paraphrasing that, no, you just wouldn't want to deal with that distraction. And you know my opinion on Tony Dungy, so I do, I do, but mm-hmm. he's a well respected individual for the most part. Mm-hmm. And, but that's sort that, that's not, that's an unpopular position. But as it turned out, was he really wrong in that for that for that particular year? No, everything was always Michael Sam, Michael Sam, Michael Sam. How was it like being with a gay guy in the locker room? I was like, God, oh, God, stop asking me that. But they couldn't stop asking. And this is an issue right, right now that's ten times bigger, if not more. Right. Um... I think the difference is with Michael Sam at the time, and while it's not as big a deal to you and I, there had never been an openly gay person in an NFL locker room before, right? Right. The position held by Colin Kaepernick within a largely African-American league and seeing where those things have gone the question of support in the locker room for a gay player versus the question of support in the locker room, Richie Incognito not included. <laughs> uh, and Kyle Turley doesn't play anymore, right? Throw him in there as well. Um, is going to be almost unanimous in favor of, of Kaepernick. I mean, you saw what happened to Breeze yep. when he went against it. And to his credit, we joked about it, what, two weeks ago that Breeze had a really bad day, his response was tepid. But his response to the response to his response, if that makes a sentence in a sentence, mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. fantastic and pretty much redeemed maybe not all, but a lot of the negative thoughts and negative press he had got. Right? Basically saying, you know what? I never looked deeply enough into this. I talked to my teammates. They really showed me what was going on and I was stupid basically for not having realized it before. Is essentially what he tweeted back to the president. Mm-hmm. Um, so he regained, at least in the eyes of many of his of his teammates, a lot of the maybe not all of it, but a lot of the respect they would have had. So I think in this situation, and the fact that the league desperately at this point wants to make it look like they aren't blackball, they never blackballed them, and they aren't blackballing him anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, that someone will sign him. And you're right, it's not going to be a contender because there's no way, like, the only contender who really has a spot open at, at quarterback now is the Patriots. Right. And, and maybe the Steelers of Roethlisberger actually gets injured and doesn't play, which would not shock me, honestly. I mean, he's going to try and play, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's injured quickly, and that's pretty much it for him. Um, but the Patriots have no, like, literally no cap space. Like, they have less than a million dollars of cap space. And because of that, I really think they're going to give Stidham a shot coming into this year and mm-hmm. see exactly what they have. Now, it's entirely possible that something else happens, but I can't imagine the Patriots being, the, and who will take risks on players. I mean, they've had, he's had Albert Hainsworth, Randy Moss, Chad Ochocinco. Uh, he had Antonio Brown last year before everything weird happened. Um, Aaron Hernandez, I have to bring up because everybody else does. Um, that one didn't work out as well, um, but <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I don't think even the Patriots would do that just based off of the circumstances. So it would have to be someone like the like the Chargers, like the 
Bengals, uh, but these, these are all teams that drafted quarterbacks. So, yeah, I, I think I think he's going to get picked up. I don't think it's the same as Michael Sam, even though neither of them should really be big issues. We still, honestly, haven't had an openly gay player other than Michael Sam. I mean, there, there have been them. They've been out there. They definitely exist. Oh, multiple. So we, yeah. I mean, they're all over the place. Um, just statistically, but it's it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens. Though I do think Kaepernick is signed. I do think it's going to be by the Chargers, um, and I do think we'll be with him the next month. Yeah, and hopefully someone will break that barrier in the WNBA where we'll have our first openly gay player. We haven't had an openly gay player in the NBA or WNBA. In the of WNBA, course. no, I don't. I don't believe so. And wait, did you say WNBA or yes. NBA? WNBA. Oh, okay, yeah. We've had gay players in the WNBA. Yeah, I know. I was... What are you talking about? Okay, I'm sorry. Not all Not all my jokes are, are hit. That, that apparently I'm, is I'm not. sorry. I, I, it's, it's late at night, and I'm just... Uh, I, neither of us have been drinking, so our, our reflexes aren't as fast with jokes as they normally are. So things are always funnier when you've had at least a little bit of uh, alcohol, but neither of us are, both of us are sober. So yeah, it seems like this sober. hasn't been as funny as they normally are. I think that's probably why. Well, it's, it, well I'm going to blame that. So I, I, I believe it was, uh, I'll blame it on the lack of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I think I redeemed yeah. myself on that one. Yeah, so... Anyway, so uh, what are we going to do next week? We're going to be talking about the uh, Hockey Hall probably, yeah. right? Yeah, Hockey Hall of Fame, but so I believe it'll be the Wednesday, and we usually do this uh, Thursday night, so it'll be fresh in our minds. We know it's uh, Iggy, and we don't know who's joining him. Cool. Yeah, um, I'm still hanging by number 31 on your list, whoever <laughs> that was. I can't remember anymore. Bobby Smith. Bobby Smith, that's right, yeah. Yes, the the random name generator of of uh, of hockey players, and, um, and probably yeah. the most frequent frequently checked in hotel room name by uh, cheating husbands. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. And not that I would know. Anyway, I don't that know note. myself either. <laughs> it just seems like that'd be the name I I I'd, I'd consider using. Sure, why not? You might as well pick something that's. Uh, that's pretty generic. Well, it's better than Ron Mexico. So. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so, bit. That was so, my so, favorite so, thing. I, when, 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 I, when the NFL doc, when the NFL couldn't figure out why, why all of a sudden there was a rush on on uh, personalized jerseys with Mexico on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Something I probably shouldn't say on, and admit publicly, but I'm going to here. We had a little bit in college, we had a little bit of a issue with another fraternity um, sucker punching one of our guys and then all of our guys coming on campus. And it was a big deal. All the police were there. But the police were trying to arrest drunk members like of the fraternity because people have been out drinking. It was a Saturday night and not all of them were, were of age. And I was sober. And so I was basically walking around talking to police officers, just like sending the guy to their room. And being like, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I don't have my ID on me. And like, what's your name? And I gave seven different names that night to seven different police officers, all of whom were former second baseman of the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> so, so, so they never found Jerry so Remy. I, I, I did not use Jerry Remy, though. I was Marty Barrett. I was Jeff Fry. Uh, it was Jody Reed. Um, yeah, it was... It was yeah, I was actually. It's, I wasn't Martin. I wasn't Marty Barrett. I called myself Martin Barrett. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was pretty funny. So I guess I guess maybe if I ever had a situation in which I need to go incognito, and you're looking for me, just look for the former Red Sox second baseman who is signed in somewhere. I may not look like Louis Salasea, but I am tonight. <laughs> a sentence that you never thought you'd utter. No, an Archimedes Pozo. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, on, on the all Red Sox name team of my life, Ar- Archimedes Pozo, definitely our starting second baseman. Still maintain the so. best name of all time is Stubby Clap. Stubby Clap is a pretty fantastic name. 
Yeah, we, we, we did that once, though, with my friends. We had the all Boston sports names for each of the, each of the major sports. And uh, the Archimedes Pozo, Izzy Alcantara, Nomar Garcia Parra is hard to beat. I know he's famous, but it's really hard to beat that one. Um, yeah, just going through and around. And I, Bob Zupsik came up for our right fielder. Um, that, was, that was the time. He was playing around the time that um, You Can't Touch This was popular. And so when he make a good play, my friends and I, because we're losers, go do 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 Bob Subsick. <laughs> yeah, that was that was we were his big, we were his biggest fans. So well, anyway, let's get out of here before we get through everybody who's played for the Red Sox from 1985 on. <laughs> so I, I will talk to I will talk to you later, my friend. All right, take care. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope everyone out there stays safe, and we will have a lot more new content here from NotInHallOfFame.com in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again.